this country. They got money to survive. And we can't be social helping uh, the whole uh, Euro. We can't do that. And the New Jersey theme park, dubbed the world's most dangerous, is back. But will it survive a more litigious America? That's Business Matters after the latest BBC News. BBC News with Jonathan Izard. Israel's security cabinet has convened for the second time since the bodies of three Israeli teenagers were found in the occupied West Bank on Monday. The Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, vowed again to find those who had kidnapped and murdered them. The bodies of the three teenagers have been buried in central Israel, as Kevin Connolly reports from Jerusalem. The funeral of the three murdered teenagers drew huge crash. TR2015, Internet Radio. I bought this a couple of days ago from Cash Converters for $55. It wasn't new when I bought it, it was second hand. I think these were introduced in about 2006 or 2007. And from what I've read on the internet, when these were new, they were like $200. And I do remember seeing these at Dick Smith stores at least once or twice. Uh, this is quite a basic Wi-Fi radio, actually. It only receives internet radio. It doesn't receive AM or FM radio or anything like that. And it was released before DAB Plus digital radio started broadcasting in this country. So, of course, it can't receive that. As you can hear right now, it's playing the BBC World Service. I've had a brief look on the internet for info about these things since I bought it. And a couple of people were saying it's a good radio once you upgrade the firmware. And when I first received it, I was a little bit, or when I was deciding whether I wanted it or not, I was a little bit unsure because I tried to connect it to various Wi-Fi networks. I was with my relatives at the time I bought it. And when I plugged in at the cash converter store, I tried scanning for nearby wireless networks, and there are a few net networks I tried to connect to, and I would say things like, network not supported. I also tried to connect it to my iPhone's personal hotspot mode. And again, it also said, network not supported. But luckily, when I got back to my relative's house, we discovered that it worked with their wireless network, and so I was able to get the radio connected. It's kind of ironic, this radio is a Bush branded radio, although of course the Bush company isn't what they were, you know, many, many, many decades ago. It's just virtually a brand name now that's just used on various cheap electronic devices, but it's ironic when I got it working and was playing a station from the 80s. The station I was playing, was playing, the station I was listening to was playing Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush. And I just thought that was a bit ironic and kind of interesting. But once I established the radio was working, I upgraded the firmware on it. And the new firmware, or the, the firmware that I have installed, which is probably the latest version, I don't know when it was released. But the latest firmware that I'm running also supports things like Live 365. I don't have a Live 365 account. But apparently this can play station streaming from Live 365. And this is something I haven't really tested very thoroughly on this radio. This radio appears to use a receiver chipset in it. And actually, it's quite apparent that it does, because when you bring up the list of stations for the first time, You'll see it says station update from receiver on the screen. And when you, the very first time you plug the radio in and turn it on, it talks about being based on a receiver database. And that's good because that tells me that I can register the radio with receiver and add stations to the database and things. The radio didn't come with the manual, but I've managed to track it down online. It did come with the AC adapter, which is good, because it needs quite a specific power adapter. Being quite an old radio, it's been discontinued quite a long time ago. Bosch 
products typically don't seem to have the longest shelf life I've found. They only seem to keep products on the shelf for about a year before they discontinue them. I don't know how long this radio was in production before before they discontinued it. I think these were on the shelves for maybe two or three years. I don't recall when I saw these at Dick Smith, but I know I saw them there. But I've read on the internet that there were people who were buying these radios from, say, Big W in 2008 or 2009 for like $98. Also, local councils in Norway are now allowed to ban beggars from their streets, but is the ban really about... And for, you know, a new out-of-the-box radio at that time, that's not bad value, I don't think. That's reasonable value. But I don't think I would have paid $200 for this back in the back when it was new. It is a rather cheaply made radio. It's not terribly made, but it is. you can tell it's kind of cheap. It's not a very user-friendly radio to use, actually. It, the user interface is a little bit basic, and it's not very intuitive. You have buttons on the top here. You've got the power on-off button. Preset buttons, the radio can have up to 10 presets, and so you have the preset buttons can double as different things. It can also play multi uh, MP3 files and things stored on a computer connected to your wireless network, but it only seems to support Windows. I've not really tried to mess with this feature because I'm a Mac user, and so I don't know if there's a way that I could use this radio to stream my music collection from my iMac. There's probably a software program out there that will allow me to do it, but I haven't really tried to look into it. The receiver database does have quite a large collection of radio stations, which is nice. Let's have a quick look at the user interface. So, you have the back and select buttons here which you use to move through the menus and then you've also got this dial here which is used to navigate the menus and also to adjust the volume the problem I have with this dial here is it isn't click stopped so when you rotate it it just rotates freely which can make navigating through the menu system a bit difficult well the days of the need for such little white lies may be numbered in Europe at least and that's because the European Commission has just made another step towards banning these so-called roaming charges. If you live in the EU and you travel to another of its 28 member nations, you'll now pay 50% less for downloading mobile data. Calls and text messages will also be cheaper. Brussels wants to outlaw roaming fees entirely by the end of next year. Ryan Heath is a Commission spokesperson. We're trying to normalise the market, and one of the tools for normalising the market is to prevent... And my camera's not focusing very well on the screen. So we'll bring up the menu, and... Ugh. That's a bit better. That's, I think that's as good as it's going to get. When you move through the menu, you can oftentimes accidentally skip menu options because the dial isn't click stopped. If you go into stations you get location information and it tells you how many stations are online currently. And that number seems to fluctuate a bit. We had like two, 22,100 odd stations on here the other day but now there seems to be fewer. And you've got your Live 365 option here. Now, when I first started using this radio, that option wasn't there, so obviously that's being added later on in the newer firmware. If we go to genre, you get things like 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and a whole lot of different genres. My camera is not focusing well on the... Oh. The iPhone's camera does not like this display very much. Oh, we'll just have to make do with that, I think. So you can see I can quite quickly scroll through the different genres. So 
So we will scroll back here. We'll go to 80s. And that's now loading the database. It gets the database off the internet, of course. And we'll try one of them back to the 80s. Now, you do have various streams here. You've got the 128k MP3 stream. A 64k AAC Plus stream. And a 32k AAC Plus stream. Now, that stream sounds pretty dreadful. So, we'll go to the 128k stream. And now it's connecting. I'll turn that down so I don't get copyright infringement claims. And now that station is playing. As I say, this radio doesn't have any real features other than internet radio playback. It does have a clock and an alarm and a sleep timer. Accessing things like the alarm and the sleep timer is buried within the menu, so it's not the easiest thing to access. It will... Uh, automatically set the clock by your network. Though you do need to set the hour because of, I think it defaults to probably GMT when you first get it, but you need to, you need to set the hour offset. But once you do that, it's alright. When you turn the radio off, as I have done, and the display looks a lot easier to see when the backlight is dim. The backlight's still on, but it's very dim. When you turn the thing off, as you can see, it shows the clock. The radio does seem to remain connected to your wireless network, even when it's in standby mode. Now, in one way, this is good, because it does take the radio quite a while to connect to my network here. That may be because I've got other things like my iPhone and my Wemo switch and things connected to my network, but... It does take a while for it to connect to the network and then get connected to the internet database that it uses. It takes a good 30 seconds, 40 seconds to do that from a, from a cold start. But even when it's off, it's, also, it's still connected to your network. Now, this radio does seem to support multiple network profiles, but it, it doesn't support them very well. What I mean is, if you were to connect this radio to your network and then you wanted to take it to a friend's house or to a relative's house and connect it to their network, when you plug the radio in, the first thing it will do is it will try and connect to your network. If it doesn't find your network, it will then bring up the network configuration menu and you can scan for networks or manually enter your network details. Now, this could potentially be a problem because I have my network set up so that it doesn't broadcast its SSID. You have to manually enter the SSID if you want to connect to my wireless network here at my house. Now, my router can display its SSID, but I have just personally configured it so that it doesn't, just because I don't want other people to try, try to connect to my network. And I do have quite a high level of security on my network. Well, relatively high anyway. But this would present a bit of a problem for me because if I want to take this to my mum's house, for example, and then bring it back here, it doesn't seem apparently very easy for me to reconnect to my network without having to enter my SSID again. Now, the radio will save multiple network profiles, but reconnecting to networks you previously used does seem to be a little bit, a little bit unintuitive, a little bit unfriendly. Whereas something like the Sanjin WFR28D over there that I reviewed a couple of months ago will connect to a wireless network that it's been previously registered in the past with that question. So I can turn that radio on here and it connects to my network without even asking me because it knows the SSID and password. I can take it to my relative's house and turn it on and it won't even prompt me 
to try to connect to other networks, it will just find my relative's network and connect because it's being registered with their network. This one seems to be a little bit unfriendly in that regard. It's not it's not great. So now the radio is off. When I turn it back on, it should reconnect to Wang FM very quickly. And there we have it. I have found that when listening to music stations, for whatever reason, the radio doesn't tell me the name of the song that's playing. You says that you see that it currently says "Real Enable." I don't quite know what that's referring to because this is an MP3 stream, not a real audio stream. So I don't quite know what that's talking about. But it doesn't tell me, it doesn't show me the information about the station like they're kind of tagging or anything like that. And it doesn't show me the name of the currently playing song. And I know this particular station does broadcast the name of the song that it's currently playing because I've listened to it in Utunes on my iPhone. So that issue's probably with the chipset in this receiver. Another gripe that I have with this radio, and it's a bit of a personal complaint that I have about it, you can't put batteries in this radio and use it portably. It has to be plugged in with its AC adapter. There's no provision to put batteries in anything. It doesn't have a rechargeable battery or anything like that. Now, this was probably just a cross-cutting measure on the manufacturer's part. And also, it is pretty old. But, even back then, in 2006, 2007, I do believe there were some portable Wi-Fi radios out there that could be used on batteries. But this one just doesn't have that option. And it's not a big radio. It's quite small. It's not terribly large. It probably looks it in the iPhone, but that's because I'm sitting so close to it. Yeah, the radio is quite portable. And it's relatively lightweight as well, so... I think they could have designed it so they get ran on, say, 5C cells or 5D cell batteries. But it doesn't. Setting presets on this radio is quite easy. We just go to a station that has presets. And here, you'll see that when I press the back button to get into the menus, it has brought me back into where I was with the different streams for 1FM back to the 80s. So I need to back out a couple of times. We'll just find something here. Go to News Talk. And it has to load the station list. It's taking a little while. So we'll select this stream. And if I want to, I actually won't use that one more. There are some stations here from Australia. ABC Sydney 702 will... Ah, okay, we can change. We'll try and do the AAC stream, we'll see if that plays. And you're not Tony, I'm going to completely disagree with you here. I'm sorry, it's a standoff in the Duna War. But thank you for the call nonetheless. Okay, <laughs> and Jenny, you're a little bit odd, I've got to confess. 
Yeah, I think I'm really afraid. Now, if I wanted to set the station as a preset, all I have to do, I have presets on buttons one and two, so I just have to press and hold preset button three, hold it in, and that's now saved. So on the whole, this isn't a terribly bad radio, but as I say, I paid $55 for it at cash converters. If I'd had my way, I wouldn't have paid that much for it. I don't think it's, even now, I don't know if it's really worth that much. It's a reasonable radio, but I think there are, and I'm probably covering up my microphone, so I apologise for that. It's not a bad radio, but I think, you know... We have much better options for listening to internet radio than this receiver. Even something like my Sanjin radio over there is a much better radio. It's much more user-friendly than this one. And it has a lot more features. But for a radio from, say, 2007, this isn't horrible. It's not horrible, but I just think there are better options out there. And as I say, I don't believe Bush makes this receiver anymore. It's pretty old. But I don't mind it, it's alright. Anyway, that's my brief talk about this radio. Thanks for watching, and feel, feel free to leave a comment if you have one. And I apologise for my lackluster camera work, I'm not a good videographer. But I'm certainly trying. Anyway, thanks for watching.